One Piece chapter 1013. This was a chapter with a very surprising outcome. Now, this was an outcome that I've always thought was possible, especially before the raid started. But the possibility diminished greatly for me ever since Luffy started to get these blooms mid-battle. And Luffy at this one time always came back, even when he was knocked out by Ragnarok a few chapters ago. So it felt like Luffy had been invincible in these past few chapters. But this was also an outcome that I wanted to happen because even though Luffy was getting all these power-ups and matching Kaido in strength, we have to remember that he literally just learned it and so he's definitely not going to be as proficient as someone like Kaido who's honed his abilities for years. Even though we saw Luffy go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kaido in those few chapters, we now know that that wasn't consistent as to what was happening off screen. It seems like Kaido took the edge eventually and defeated Luffy. And honestly, this stays true to Kaido's reputation so far based on his introduction chapter, right? In a 1v1, always bet on Kaido. So far, it has been proven true but let's not get ahead of ourselves here what this means is that luffy is just going to bounce back even harder whether it be a new gear or him manifesting this new form of conquerors in conjunction with deverford or even awakening whatever it is i think this is where luffy is going to put everything that he has and i think this is where things would align with hawkins prophecy about a certain individual having a one percent chance of survival even though it looks like luffy is falling into the ocean that's obviously not going to happen Happen. Oda has this habit of making things much more grim than they really are. But the real question is, how is Luffy going to get back on Onigashima? Onigashima is seemingly thousands of meters in the air, and we aren't even sure if it's close to land yet, because Luffy would have more of a chance of surviving if he landed on land. But if it's the ocean, with him unconscious, this doesn't look good at all. Granted, the way that the Straw Hats got into Wano in the first place involved them drowning and then waking up ashore, so maybe something similar happens here. There's also the possibility that Luffy wakes up as well, and then he can go into gear 4th and just fly back into Onigashima. But as stated by Momo beforehand in the previous chapter, Luffy doesn't have a lot of energy left. So going into gear 4 might not be applicable here. So right now, I will say that it's looking very grim for Luffy and also for the entire alliance as well. Because Kaido is now a free agent, he can do whatever he wants to. The only people capable of fighting him to some regard right now would be Law and Kid and also Killer. I'm not sure about X Drake, but he can definitely help. But Zoro and Luffy are out for the count. Zoro has broken bones all over, so it's going to be a while before he gets back ready to fight again. Unless Law has some crazy surgery that he can use on him. And so with Luffy out of the picture, this changes the spectrum of the war drastically in the favor of the Beast Pirates. Now this is the second time I think Luffy has been defeated multiple times by the same villain or antagonist. If I recall, Crocodile was the first person to do it and Kaido is now the second person. But again, it looks like third time will be the charm. Now there is a possibility that Big Mom fights him, but the whole mothering mode just seems to apply to Otama specifically, and the logic around it is still kind of vague, because I don't know if Big Mom would be willing to fight Kaido over the Otama thing. Now we do get to see Big Mom show anger towards Otama in this chapter when Otama tries to leave her, so this is kind of in line with her personality that we saw on Whole Cake Island to some degree. Uh, it's never straightforward with Big Mom. Now I do see a big mom betrayal later down the line but i would imagine it would be something much more calculated and grandiose coming from big mom i don't think this otama plotline would have that much of an effect on the alliance of the yonko at least i'm hoping the effect isn't that drastic now talking about big mom here like i mentioned in my previous chapter review even though oda was setting up a battle between ulti and nami i did also say that it was very likely that big mom would wouldn't let nami handle things and ultimately that's what happened in this chapter now we did get to to see a cool brief confrontation between uh nami and uti you know with nami using her tempo abilities but again nami is unmatched at this point in time again uti is someone that was fighting against luffy and almost forced him into gear four so it makes a lot of sense that nami currently cannot beat her but again with the setup that we're seeing with nami potentially getting zeus back i think that would even the odds because nami's abilities work perfectly in conjunction with zeus i think at that point in time nami will have enough firepower to beat uti now I'm not sure when that battle is going to take place because we see that Big Mom got involved. 
Uh, we come to see Big Mom use her new homie Hera in conjunction with Prometheus and Napoleon to essentially one shot Ulti with like an arrow like attack. Now again page one and Ulti are ancient zones they will be back at some point in time and so maybe that's when the rematch between Ulti and Nami will take place as well as the rematch between Usopp and page one because that's the setup we got between those two. Hard to say when that is because a lot of unexpected events have happened in the past few chapters so things are in shambles right now. Now with Big Mom, we come to find out that Hera is indeed a replacement for Zeus as we all predicted. Uh, given Zeus' prior failures, it, it makes a lot of sense that she wanted a more capable homie. And Hera fits the mold perfectly in which she's more powerful and works perfectly in tandem with the other homies, just like we saw with the combined attack earlier. Zeus also makes his appearance in this chapter, um, trying to get back with Big Mom, but at this point in time, it's too late and Big Mom now has a superior homie. And he also got a lot of fallout from Napoleon and Prometheus as to how incompetent he was and the numerous times he almost got Big Mom killed. So there's really no benefit of Zeus getting back with Big Mom because of how much he, he failed her. And so at this point in time, Zeus is completely discarded, which gives Nami a good chance for Zeus to become a permanent support structure for her because Big Mom orders Hera to eat Prometheus. So this is obviously having an emotional effect on Zeus. And this ultimately, you know, causes him to completely rebel against Big Mom, even though she created him. Now, we have to remember that Big Mom's abilities are kind of weird in, in the sense uh, in which the uh, homies that she creates with her ability have the ability to think on their own and have separate personalities than Big Mom herself. And they operate without constant control from Big Mom. So Zeus turn inside here makes a lot of sense. Now, even though he got ate by Hera here, I still think that Zeus is alive and he will most likely return later on. We have to remember that the black orbs Hera ate, uh, Nami can control those black orbs at any point in time. So I could see Nami doing something there uh, later on in some sort of event that happens. Uh, whether she gets Zeus back or she uses that as a counter attack against Big Mom, that's something that I think will happen because Hera ate those black orbs. And we've seen Nami do something similar uh, back in Hokik Island when Nami used the lightning strike against Big Mom. Now moving on to Kid here, we see that the Big Mom and Kid plotline still seems to be in effect. And we have Kid attack Big Mom with a Gibson attack again. Again, there doesn't seem to be a lot of variety within Kid's arsenal. So far, his abilities have been very one-dimensional. But I'm very interested in seeing more because I do think that he has more. I just think that he needs to be in a 1v1 scenario because then he can show more. Which he is currently getting at this point in time. So I'm kind of looking, I'm still looking forward to Big Mom versus Kid. We also have to remember that he is back in the castle where there's more material for him to play with. So the environment definitely favors him here more so than on the rooftop anyways now i gotta say that i do like kaido's words to luffy here about hope which is very very interesting because of how we were getting all this build up about how luffy said he can handle things on his own with that much confidence and even in the previous chapter with zoro and sanji having the fate that they had in luffy usually when we get these moments we expect a lot of things right and it's almost tragic in a sense right where we have all these people having this high expectation and hope in luffy but it turns out everything was for nothing right kaido defeated luffy here uh, from what it seems like anyways kaido was definitely exuding his villain energy in this chapter for sure kind of a first that we've seen from kaido he actually feels like a villain here especially his dialogue at the end there i really like that coming from kaido and so this brings me to this chapter potentially being the end of act three and if i recall correctly this is the act that ends in tragedy and this adds up well with what's happening in this chapter now i could be wrong but it would make a lot of sense for the act to end here given the structure of the kabuki play so there is a possibility that act four might start next chapter or towards the end of the next chapter because act three isn't over yet but it makes a lot of sense that act three ends here in tragedy because luffy lost but this was a very interesting chapter for sure i'm definitely looking forward to the mess that onigashima has become and when i say mess i mean how unpredictable things have become because big mom's thing is crazy kaido is now a free agent there's a lot of things that can happen we also have to remember that the cp0 is also there and orochi as well like what's going to happen to him there's a lot to be said here a lot to be talked about and i am looking forward to to how everything unfolds but that's pretty much it for this video guys comment down below what you guys think i would appreciate it if you dropped a like on this video and subscribe for more one piece content on the channel 
hit this for our guys and i will see you folks later peace